How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Lonesome Hunters, Volume 1 from Dark Horse Comics. This collects the first four issues. Uh, this is written by Tyler Crook, who also does the artwork. You may know Tyler Crook as the artist behind the absolute classic horror comic, Harrow County, and this is kind of like a passion project of his. He's literally, if you flip to the credit line, it's like story art and letters all by Tyler Crook. It's one man doing what he wants to do, telling the story he wants to tell, and you can really see the passion and love behind this. Really, as always, great artwork by Tyler Crook actually doing, I think, their watercolor paintings. And you can really see the effort. But also, really, really good characters. Uh, Howard and Lupe there. And yeah, I remember their names because I care for them. Um, but Howard's an old man who's kind of been thrust into this magic world his whole life. He has a magical sword that he really doesn't want, and it's kind of keeping him alive even though all his life choices have been things that he never really wanted. He never wanted to be the man with the magic sword. Well, his neighbor in his apartment building, a young girl, Lupe, her uncle steals something from an army of magical birds, uh, one of those, I think they call them magpies, but the birds that grab a bunch of shiny stuff, and it turns out, you know, a bird itself might not be threatening, but when there's a whole army of them all across the city always watching you, and they can swarm around you, and of course, horror fantasy, they have magical powers, and some of them can really wreck you. It's a really good, funny, introductory villain. And I do want to say, with the horror and supernatural stuff, they go more animal-based kind of folklore stuff, and that really is good and kind of unnerving. You know, some of the, the creatures in here, like before the magpies, you see this deer creature, is super creepy. And when you see what the magpie queen looks like, great design. Now, that being said, doing a bunch of birds is not the biggest, most epic villain, at the same time, though, it's a fun villain with this cool little routine, and they're all like, the shiny stuff, the treasure, give it to me! And you can really see the, the sort of flock of birds personality. It's funny, but not the biggest thing, and I think this is a whole issue one thing. Is there a really good uh, sort of episode one villain, a really good volume one villain for these characters, and it's good as an introduction. But I, I've said this before, American comics, sometimes they can get cut short. You only go one issue a month, and in turn, it kind of it takes a whole year to get 12 issues. And I really think that this book needs at least six issues just for the pacing. You know, you start off small, you're going to go on this big road trip. It needs to get big and epic, and I'm hoping it gets all the time it deserves. But really, you know... I could see manga opening up with a wacky villain because manga, it's like if you only get six issues in a manga, that's kind of a short run, uh, six volumes rather. But I'm really hoping that this gets the time it needs to to breathe and they can expand and we can see this this cool world. And it's sort of a case of fingers crossed. I, I hope this comes out right. I, I hope people support it and I hope we get the, the full story there. So. Here's hoping that this gets the development it needs because it didn't rush the opening. We got a fun, cool introductory story. And here's hoping that not rushing it pays off because, yeah, this needs six. And I see a lot of American comics getting cut to like three volumes. So who knows? Fingers crossed. I hope this gets to be the epic road trip it deserves. Anyway, if you guys want to see me talk about this comic in more detail... I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. We'll take a peek at the physical release. I'm not going to show you guys any major spoilers. I, I try not to go too far in this comic, but I do want to show you a little of the story, a little of the art, show you guys some of the cool stuff without spoiling it, without going in too deep. So without further ado, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look 
at the Lonesome Hunters. Let's go ahead and bring this closer to the camera. We can see our two main characters, uh, Howard and Lupe there, and he's got his big magical sword, and all the birds are in the background. The birds are a cool design element, but they also are the main villain of the first uh, volume, so good to incorporate them on the cover. Really nice. I believe these are watercolors by Tyler Crook there, and overall, a really fun cover, and I do like, you know, the sword. You see that? pattern it looks just like a splash but that's actually the uh the sword there anyway that color is continued on the spine we see a volume one there and flip it to the back we get several blurbs uh we get colin bunn colin bunn worked with tyler crook on harrow county good to see him putting in a good word for his friend we also get jeff lemire who is another prominent horror comic book writer and yeah both these people showed up that's very cool uh, I, I love both colin bunn and jeff lemire they, they make good comics uh but anyway i will flip to the bottom dark horse comics 1999 us which is a fairly standard price for a graphic novel. Uh, some of the times when they get cheaper, you might find them for like 15 If they're trying to do an introductory price, you could get lucky and maybe find a $10 one. Uh, but a lot of them seem to go for 20 nowadays. However, that being said, if we open the book and flip to the uh, legal page here, we can see that it collects Lonesome Hunters 1 through 4. And, yeah, this is a thing that's, uh, especially for indie comics nowadays, the four-issue trade paperback. Now, granted, what this book does, you know, it's an introductory story. It features a story with the magpies. I may have called them crows earlier. Uh, but, yeah, this particular plot arc only needed to be four issues long, and I get that. Um... But at the same time, yeah, 20 bucks for four issues, that's $5 a book. A little bit of a steep price there, but I guess gotta keep the indie uh, comics uh, lights on in their offices. So, you know, yeah, what you gonna do? Uh, but anyway, flip it open, Lonesome Hunters Volume 1 with the sword, and we get the credits here on this page. The Lonesome Hunters, created by Tyler Crook, he did the script, the art, and the lettering. So we really do get to see this is a a one-man passion project. And, you know, you can really see that he does care for this. And there is clearly so much effort on, on screen here. And all his beautiful artwork with these, these nice watercolors. You know, so much of modern comics, there's art that's just so-so. But to see him really put the effort in here, it's, it's just really great. Uh, but anyway, let's flip into the comic proper. I won't be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points, show you guys the art. I'll be avoiding the end and any big reveals, but I do want to give you guys just a little taste of this. Um, so into the story, no major spoilers. And I do want to say one thing I really love is they kept the covers in as chapter divides it really bugs me when they take out the chapter divides and i don't know where one issue stops and the next one starts uh, but we also get these double page splash covers i believe when these were single issues these would bend the other way so this would be the back cover and it connects to the front cover and in turn all these covers are really nice double page splashes that's super cool uh, but anyway, we flip to uh, young, uh, young Howard holding the magic sword. You see, the church has recently procured it from, uh, from someone, and they say it's like the first sword, the ultimate magical weapon. Uh, of course, the church is gruff and mean, and I guess being from the South, I should mention, not all churches are this way, yet there definitely are some that are this way. But if you have a church like that, feel free to shop around. A lot of them are just really nice people. But okay, this this one in particular is really gruff. However, uh, strangely enough, they aren't wrong when it comes to 
uh, there's actually a cult here, and oh my gosh, this thing. You know, it's not a super intense, crazy creature design, but sometimes simpler is better when it's just like, hey, what if the monster was a freaking giant talking deer? Maybe you don't need to go any simple, any uh, more complex than that. Uh, but anyway, they break in and start shooting up the place, and it quite quickly goes wrong for young poor Howard. His father dies to a cultist, and the deer, <laughs> the deer is like, if I took that sword from you, I might devour this absurd world. It's too powerful. How about we just burn up in the flames instead? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, but young Howard survives here. So uh, he grows up. He doesn't want the sword, but he's kind of stuck with it. And in turn, you can tell that his whole life, he's been a part of this magical world he doesn't want to be. And he's aged so much where he should be dead by now, but the sword is keeping him alive. So he is, he is really old, but he should be dead. So he's this old man kind of wandering around and he spent his life how he didn't want to getting drug into one thing after the other because of the sword but he's kept it put away for a while so we get that regretful old man character and we get to see that uh, this little girl who lives in his apartment building Lupe her uncle has stolen a watch and she has decided that it is bad news and decides to sneak it away from the uncle, and give it to Howard. So Howard takes the cursed watch, the uncle flips out, but then after a little bit, Lupe is going to come to his door and say, Howard, I really need you, something terrible has happened, and we get to see that uh, a crow has taken over his mind. This image, I mean, that is, you know, the birds are kind of a silly, uh, silly enemy, but you get something like this and you're like, okay, that's pretty cool. So Howard has to once again take out the sword that he's kept hidden for so long. And it's one of those things, you know, opening the, uh, the whole bottle again. He keeps it kind of magically in this little cigar box there. And we get to see just looking in from the other room there. Um, but anyway, he pulls out the magic sword for the first time in a while. And he's going to have to try to take down the magpie. He is really old and it is going to be harder than you think. But in a good sort of, where's a panel that kind of shows it, it is going to kind of spiral out of control and the magpies why uh, one little bird isn't that big a problem they kind of have their eyes all over the place and there's just so many of them and they're going to try to negotiate with the uh the queen of the magpies and try to uh get lupe out because she didn't and neither of them wanted to be a part of this uh but we get a little bit of on the road stuff we get to find out a few characters from Howard's past there and yeah they're sort of on the run for a bit trying to solve this problem and the two of them really do get to talk to each other get to know each other pretty well and they do have a really good relationship you know that sort of old man and young character kind of a a mentor like thing and just to see them hang out there's one page, I try to find it, where they're just driving in the car and Lupe's telling Howard about this anime she used to watch as a kid and it's just this fun conversation. Yeah, here it is. There's just this fun, laid-back conversation where the two get to know each other and are just casually talking. And yeah, I really do like the characters here and how they interact and, and how they're friends, you know. And I do like, you know, Howard's old and he's definitely made mistakes in his life. But to see, you know, that he's just kind of trying to to get by and he's never really gotten a, a fair chance to live his life how he wanted to. And it, it, it is really interesting and I really did like these characters. And, and like I said... The magpies are a good introduction 
villains to this world. They're, they're really interesting. They're not the biggest, scariest final boss thing ever, but they're a really good, like, episode one villain. Now, you look at, like, say, manga, and manga will run a long, long time, and in turn, I feel like you get villains like the Magpie more in manga because they know that they're going to run a decent amount of time, but American comics can be kind of brutal, and a lot of books get canceled before they should, so I really hope that this gets, because this is clearly starting what's going to be a bit of a saga and a bit of a trek for these characters, and I, I know that this is going to go to a big, crazy over-the-top ending if it does get the time it, it deserves. So I really hope that this gets to at least six uh, volumes here. Volume 1 was good, but it really does need to build up and have that scale. So here's hoping that we do get a decent run out of this book, because this is really a story that does need at least six volumes, I would say. So here's hoping it does do that. Overall, though, I found this really fun. Great story, great art, clearly a passion project, and I really do like the world and what all it sets up. Pretty cool. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be um, my horror comics playlist. If you guys want to see me talk about more horror comics, there's lots of stuff in there, including Volume 1 of Haro County, so there's definitely more to watch. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.